All right, we're back here on site. Last time we were here, we got this uh, WeatherLogic roof panel installed, finished up the porches. Definitely a very, very sturdy sheet good, and it made a really nice flat roof. I think it's gonna be a great roof system to install our standing seam on. So that's what we're gonna do now. We just got that delivered yesterday, and I'm gonna go ahead and start trimming this out so we can get our dimension, cut our panels exactly, get our hems on them, and then start installing. I know we've gone over this whole standing seam thing, but make sure you go ahead and leave yourself some material out there on the end, and you do a nice little bend over. That'll give you something to rivet your connection on your rake trim down to this eave, this extended eave, later on. All right, and we're gonna do something that I got a lot of feedback on, and I thought, you know what? Whether, whether they were right or wrong, there shouldn't be any water coming down this roof. However, yes, maybe you get some condensation, and what we're gonna do is just tape off with some of the uh, WeatherLogic seal tape. So this is flashing seal tape. We're just gonna create a barrier here. So if water does work its way down, it's got to work its way over top and not underneath into the soffit. I mean, you know what? For the cost of this tape and the time it takes to do it, um, sure, it's not, bad. it's not a bad idea. So while I'm up here getting the uh, roof prep, Greg's down low, getting the panels prepped. He's using the Swenson shear. Uh, it just makes it really easy to get the ribs punched instead of having to cut them. We got that punch that just does a really nice job. I'm sure you've already seen us use it, and I'm not sure exactly what Greg's doing. What are you doing, Greg? That's right. As you, you probably remember, you know, with that first piece of standing seam, we've got this rake cleat trim because this is what's going to lock on and hold the roof panel down by having that rake trim that's gonna lock onto this edge of this rake cleat and that first panel that we're gonna bend up. So what we're gonna do is line up our porch roof with our upper roof. We aren't gonna be able to line up with the uh, vertical siding. The vertical siding from LP is exactly 16 inches. By the time you space it, it does grow a little bit. We could rip it down, but then you have to prime it. That's a huge pain. Um, Maybe LP, if you're watching this, if you're listening, maybe think about the fact that when you space your product, it's gonna grow. So incrementally, if you're trying to line up a 16 inch on center uh, vertical siding with studs, you should make it maybe 15 and I guess that would be 13 16 That way when you have your 3 8 gap, uh, the center of that gap is right on the center of a stud. And in this case, it would be perfect to have our battens line up exactly with the ribs of our standing seam roof. However, that's not gonna happen that way. So while Greg is going ahead and getting that panel prepped, I just checked this for square. I used, this time I used the simple Pythagorean theorem. I made a mark up here at nine foot. Remember, three, four, five. And then I made a mark over here at 12 foot, which is uh, three times three is nine, three times four is 12, three times five is 15 and I checked it with Greg's help and it was, it was perfect. So, I mean, we know that because we squared up the porch when we framed it, but it's just always good to double check that. So when we lay out our steel, it's gonna go into our hip, hopefully perfect, so that we got that nice crisp V effect coming out of the hip from both sides with the roof panels. So enough talking, more working. Thanks for the panel, buddy. 
Okay, it's gotta make sure I'm on my edge here. Now that I got that first one on, I'm gonna go ahead and lay it out. 16 centers. All right, we got the first lift length of standing seam up. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this plastic on so that we can get on and off the roof, get our connection trim details done uh, just to protect the plastic or the, the metal as much as possible. However, you know, I know a lot of you are gonna say, man, don't leave that on. Yeah, if you leave it on too long, it will bake into the panel and it will be a pain, pain to get off. Luckily right now it's, it's really good. And we're, uh, we're in the time of year where it's not gonna see a ton of extreme heat or sunlight for that matter. Um, but regardless, we'll get this side on and we won't just leave this here. We'll just go right to getting all the connection trims on so we can clean this off. And uh, it's kind of impossible not to walk on it at some point. We're gonna have to put the siding on and uh, finish all that, but that won't be too bad of a deal. We'll just put some nice, fresh, clean shoes on. All right, so we're at the point now where we're into this hip. And I think what we're gonna do is continue to prep all of these panels because they're all gonna be made the exact same. And then we'll set up that uh, Swenson shear for the hips. So we're gonna use that Swenson shear. Honestly, that is that's probably the most time-saving, money-saving reason to have that Swenson shear. Obviously at $10,000, if you're just running barn steel roofs like what we did up here where it's just gable to gable, you could probably get away with it. However, once you enter into hips and valleys and you want precision cuts with like no real skill needed, that is where the Swenson shear comes into play. I'll show you that. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm getting ready to cut this uh, residential eave around the hip. And really, I just wanna try to make this look good here. So what I'm, I've done is I've found where my point is, but I've left all this material long for now. Uh, and I think you'll see why. I like to just leave it there, make sure I've always got enough and so what I'm gonna do is make sure that I like this. I'm just gonna put a, put a temporary screw in here. So now that we have the first piece of residential Evon, what I'm gonna do is take my second piece, the one I'm gonna cut to go in here. And really all I'm doing is looking for confirming this here. I'm looking for where it's gonna be at the point, which is about right here. And that's where I'll cut it. So in order to make these miter up, I need to know this distance here, which is inch and a half. What I'll do is come off here, inch and a half, square this up. And for the sake of time, let's also go ahead and just continue this 45 up. Even though it's a little bit, it's a little bit bigger than 45, it's not an exact 45. It's actually like 46 and some change. Let's open that up to 46. Gotta open this up a little bit. Just gonna shove my snip in here. 
Okay, now it's time to bend this around. And now should be able to should be able to open this up and this should go something like this but now what we have to do is we've got to finish this right here so with this being right about where i want it i'm going to mark that and then before i bring this in i'm just going to double check this has got to get cut And the last thing we got to do to this guy is we're just going to follow this line. And we're just putting a slight pitch bend on that. So we're a little bit gapped here because this is a little bit too long yet. There we go. Last piece. Now this will all get sealed down also with some beetle tape and our Z closure, but that'll come at a later date. Um, one thing I know you might be looking at thinking is a little bit weird and that is this, how it's a little bit wider right here. As it goes up, it gets smaller because these panels were actually, um, and this was, this was something that I did knowingly, the pitch cut is 16 and 7 eighths of an inch. So from this point down to a square line across, this is 16 and 7 eighths. I went ahead and ordered these all 17 inches shorter from one to the next, knowing that every piece I was going to get an eighth inch shorter, uh, also knowing that it didn't really matter. Yes, visually, it'd be nice if these were all perfect. It'd be awesome. I mean, I, I'd like that. But I guess being efficient and, you know, instead of buying an extra inch and cutting off uh, progressively more that I don't need, this allowed us to literally go from the end of the panel, not even mess with this rib here, and just make a straight cut on the Swenson shear. So, Efficiency wise, it made it a lot better for us. Um, I don't even know why I really, I don't really need to explain myself. I just wanted to let the people out there with the, uh, uh, the eyeball to notice that and then question what's going on if our pitch is off. It's not our pitch. It's the fact that each sheet just gets an eighth inch shorter. So it is what it is. Oh yeah. And I did say that I was gonna show you how to do this real quickly on the Swenson shear and I will. I just have been up in the lift. Greg's down there doing the Swenson right now. We're gonna to try to finish this side today. And when we go to the other porch where there's another hip, I'll, I'll try to make some time to do that for you guys, show you the video. Cause yes, hand snipping is totally doable. I hand snipped a few of these. Greg used the Swenson on probably two thirds of them. And you know he could probably make one or two up in my one just because you just gotta hand snip it. It takes more time than, well, you'll see, you'll see. Now I know that the goal and it looks like this side worked out. My center of my rib, dead on, right on the corner of the building. So if I wanna assume the same thing is gonna happen here, what I've gotta do is square this up. The easiest thing I know is just to use the Pythagorean theorem. Right here, I'm gonna mark nine foot. And I'm gonna come off my building, cause this is what I want. I want this to be right here. Okay, so what I can do, set a nail here, take my tape measure, 
what we know is that three, four, five is nine foot rise, four foot run, five foot diagonal, or in this case, nine, 12, 15. Now in theory, theory, that should be nine foot plus the thickness of our drip edge, which is probably like inch and a half. So 10, one and a half. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, which all makes perfect sense. So this should be the center of our first full rib there. So what we can do is find out where all these marks go. Oh, here, do me a fave, snap a line. So now we can measure off of that to find center of rib locations, just to verify, uh, even though we're gonna be basically lining them up with that side if everything is Should. good to go. Is that where you like it? So. Good Lord. Like 308. It's great news, dude. It feels like, it feels like it should be five o'clock, you know? Five o'clock somewhere. Okay, you're hooked on yeah. center 24, five and a quarter. 24, five and yeah, five sixteenths, bro. Yeah. Don't worry, don't tell anybody that we're a sixteenth off. You gotta come ahead. I wouldn't do anything. Well, I'd say not a bad day. We were able to get around the bigger porch. So we've got the two porches, one of them being probably half the size of the other one. And Greg's giving me the last piece right now that we need for today. Hardest part's getting through the hip, making sure everything stays square. And I think we did a pretty good job because everything Everything worked out dimension wise. Now we got to do a lot of trim details in order to finish this porch, such as our rake details on the ends of our gables, the hip cap, and our connection trim that goes along the building um, to basically make the top waterproof. Okay, so we've talked about the benefits of the snap table. You guys have seen us do some standing seam, but when you're doing just regular straight panels, it's not, I mean, it's, it's a saver, but it's not that crazy. So I'm gonna show you what really makes a snap table pro a big time saver. We're doing some hips right now. We're going to cut some hips. And if you've ever cut hips, <laughs> and if you've ever cut hip metal, you know, especially standing seam, it can be a little bit cumbersome. So what we're going to do is do that real quickly with the snap table. Go ahead, Greg. So we've got a panel here that we're gonna be cutting for the hip. We just cut a notch out of it, which is a pain to do with snips, but totally doable. Instead of having to hand snip or even use a, a shear or anything, we're just gonna run it right through the slitter. And we're gonna get a nice factory clean cut ready for the hip and uh, no effort really. Yeah, watch your fingers.